Greetings and happy Sabbath to you. Yes, that's the moon in the background. No, I didn't plan the shot. I'd like to publicly thank God for his excellence and in instruction. <coughs> Who is like him? Who can order our days? Who can <laughs> set the stars in motion, appoint appropriate times with an accurate, inerrant or unerring accuracy? Like a, a dart fired. I read a, a, a cartoon called Coffee with Jesus and <coughs> one of its most talked about cartoons. It's only a short three, a three or four bar comic strip. You might say the most controversial. <clears throat> instances is titled I have no free will and a woman goes to Jesus and asks and says you know I, I believe that you're omnipresent all knowing all seeing all, all present God you, you, you know you exist in all times Jesus says, that's right, what are you getting at? She says, it's so, it's so intrusive, I feel like I've got no free will. And Jesus replies, just because I know the way you go or what you choose, doesn't mean that I make you choose what you choose. And yet, God is teaching us, God is building us, God is giving us over, and we ask God to give us over to correction. Yes, comfort and guidance, correction, thy rod and thy staff in Psalm 23. Thy rod and thy staff are a comfort to me. Guiding. crook of the shepherd he used to hook and lift free and guide the sheep sometimes you know firmly and the rod short sharp crack across the backside Never over, you know, spare the rod and spoil the child. Not overly used, not used in an abusive state. Not used when it, when it, when it has no effect. This is a great, you know, a, a 21st century society. A, 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 a real movement against the inhibition of another person's freedom, another person's right to choose, another person's right to be wrong. Of course, society, Western society, is manifest in the, you know, the, the, the correction and punishment of children. What we have, of course, is a history where 
at times this has been abused it's become a, a thing of, of, of unfair and unjust punishment abusive damaging Society's moral fibers in those same places where smacking children and, and the use of physical correction, rebuke. The moral standards are falling apart. <coughs> it's not unusual, I spoke before, you can look in history and throughout history at peaks of civilization from the Greeks, the Renaissance, others where society reaches a, a point of comfort, a point of say stability, blessing. Safety, where a generation arises that is unchallenged by the things of the uh, generations before. <clears throat> there's no wars, there's no um, sickness, there's no... Challenge. And then, <clears throat> as Socrates writes in 150 BC, the youth of today are vain, puffed up. They, they, they don't stand when the elders enter the room, they gobble up their food and tyrannize their teachers. I, I paraphrase, but if you look up the tyrannise their teachers from Socrates you'll find the full quote and it's easy to draw parallels to today's, today's western society and when I say western society people don't automatically think America but no this is true of, of, of those that have embraced western society's culture and standards and norms this includes India this includes uh, Saudi Arabia, the places I've been throughout the Arab world, uh, similar situations arising of, of, of a wealthy and entitled middle class, same in, the, in, in white culture, same in, in, in Western culture, whatever you want to call it. It's virtually unteachable. in modern education eschewed the rule of abeyance in primary schools we've, we've stepped away from from uh, discipline and standardisation if you like in terms of moral behaviour <coughs> and in that withdrawing we're creating generations of, of, of children that are <clears throat> entitled, self-important, self-righteous, self-governing, and those moral standards that we apply in society aren't applicable to them. How does this manifest? Well, frequent lying, backtracking, low moral standards, uh, disrespect of elders, disrespect of teachers, all the things that the, 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 the theologies and philosophies and faiths <clears throat> around the world point to 
there's difficulties that the history points to as a, as a, as a crest, as a, as a peak in their society. As with uh, the, uh, was it Virgil satires? No, those were at the Aeneid. I haven't thought of this for a long time. I did read them, study them slightly when I was younger. Because I studied Latin. That was part of my uh, middle class upbringing. <laughs> No, there's a second language at school you spoke. Everyone I had to do uh, in my school had to do um, English, of course, and French as a second language. But if you're good enough, you got to uh, opt for another language. You showed aptitude, and I uh, scraped, made the cut, scraped in, and. Like everybody else, I chose the second language is German. However, because there was a limit on the size of the German class, there was an overspill into Latin. The school, for whatever reason, can maintain a link with the past and still maintain classical studies as part of the general uh, education. And... <laughs> At the senior level, also taught. Latin, and I got to do Latin um, rapidly in a very small class, five, maybe five students, four students. But there we go. That's that's what I did. And one of the things we looked at was I keep going to say Virgil's satires. I can't go on Google to find out. Comes to me, it comes to me, um, and to look through these stories where contemporary societies in, the, in these in these peaks of society, peak of Roman society, in case of the satires, uh, almost a, a poking fun. goings on of the day <clears throat> and again it, it, it's prevalent in our society I've witnessed in the 30 years of, of my adult life <clears throat> getting on for more than that <laughs> 30 years of my adult life a change, you know, a, 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 you know, satire has been a, a clever tool to expose the vagaries of society. Uh, to become one where where comedy has become facile, facetious, idiotic, almost dumbed down to a level of, you know, look at me walking, ha ha, ha. look at me talking, ha ha. ha. No thought, insight, and wisdom, and it's like the whole society's doing that, and, and again, it's linked to this <clears throat> unteachable, unreachable. And it's not that people aren't listening; it's not that that that, that children have stopped listening because our ears never switch off. But it's almost like a blanket has been placed over society, and. We're being exposed to a time of change. 
and it's worse and most basic. Like, right, where's today's satire? Well, a movie called Idiocracy outlines somebody who wakes up in the future, goes to sleep now, and it points out <coughs> how less society minded, less morally governed people continue to be uh, prodigious in their um, production of children. Using words like prodigious. Heavenly Father, I come to you in confusion and difficulty. I'm trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense to me, or it's complicated. It's so excellent in its correction of me, and yet also. Oh, I believe it. Oh, I believe that it's from you and of you. And I know also the tools that it's using are not of you, so it's not. And there's been a lot of spiritual attack in the last <coughs> week, month, year. I just want to bring it before you and lay it before you and pray that I can speak about it without sounding like a git. I know you want to use a worse word than that, Lord. <coughs> but hey, I've got to carry on anyway. And Some people are... Oh, I, I lay it all down. come down this road because it's called King's Haven. Not that I'm a king, but he is. The more morally upright and liberati minded are too busy career wise and too busy and too sanitized sexual wise to uh, continue with families. And therefore they're not producing in any great numbers. And what they do is sickly and weak and inevitably over time this leads to a rise in the idiocracy where society is still in place in terms of its uh, norms but it's now run by the idiots. Put it bluntly, it's a satire. It's not, it's not me expressing my belief but it's almost... Uh, uh, prophetic insight into how societies rise and fall. I mean, this is what causes these things. We begin to self-govern. Or a society is based on religion. Done well, no, because that's also been an exercise in self-governance we've never had. Almost truly Christian society. Well, before you hold up to me that the America, United States of America, is a Christian society, it definitely isn't. <coughs> it's a society that exists bases itself on the on the moral laws of God for man, the last six commandments. Wholly embraces the defilement of the first four. Definitely the first three are a relationship between God and man. You know, the, the, the things we must do before God. Love the Lord thy God above all others. I've no other God but Him. No, no idols. 
worship and bow down to other things and take not the Lord's name in vain. I think these are essential to our being because these are our walk with the Creator a prerequisite for us to have a successful walk. And they're not catered for, they're not part of our uh, legal framework, they're part of our moral framework only as far as people you know uh, <coughs> take up the beliefs and codex or codex, I don't know what you call it of the, of the Torah the Old Testament that's Christians and Jews a long way and this is a word for the word for the world I'm giving it ten because the, the Jewish some modern Jewish society <coughs> the Talmudic following society has kind of done away with the Torah too so I'm talking about the excellence of God and his, his ability to put things right in and I'm way off field now talking about other stuff because I'm just a man and maintaining moral standards is my challenge not being hypocritical I have a tenants in the house tenant, somebody staying at the house um, given the guidance of not bringing people back, he's brought someone back as somebody we know who's also stayed in the house and he's brought someone back and for the second time they've stayed over, no request no, uh, oh they're staying over tonight and they're staying over and it's might be a, an imagining but it's likely that this relationship is going further same person is bringing his girlfriend now to stay with he has requested in the next couple of weeks flights are booked and I find myself on the horns of a moral dilemma and I'm wandering and tired and grateful in a way because it also exposes my own moral dilemma my own inadequacy the things that I've talked about before the things that I've lifted up before that sexual misconduct or sexual relationships. As I stand here, I'm looking at the, the moon shining down on the clouds, and it's like as a, a cherub sat on a cloud and looking up at the moon. And watching over the baby Jesus. earlier the sky showed was the first time this year Orion now Orion in the northern hemisphere that Orion I grew up with was a the hunter the proud set shouldered foe of um, Taurus the bull bearing down bearing a, a bow or a shield against it the <coughs> rabbit and a hunting dog at his feet sword and its Scabbard, whereas here, when you see it, when it rises, it rose for the first time, it came out clear as anything. This morning, it, it's as if it's a, a fallen figure, like a figure being cast out of hell, uh, of heaven. The 
the same person that's staying over <coughs> the unwelcome guest is someone I've had strong sexual feelings for. I'm being honest now to a point where I expose myself to criticism and judgment. <coughs> but it's the truth. This is not the first one, and I'm married. God and his excellence shows us these things and it floors us. It floors me. I'm talking about it to share the experience. I'm talking about it to not gain I pray I'm not doing it to try and gain sympathy but rather give insight into the transformation into the change that is our struggle and walk as the new creations and as Christianity and the old we could quite happily accept moral st uh, you know total forgoing of moral standards but well, almost oh, almost total I have friends who had to keep a diary, a timetable with different girls' names on they were sleeping with. I was jealous of those people. I used to rail. You know, why Why am I not in multiple sexual relationships or in continual sexual relationships? And now I look back and see God's hand upon me and I'm like, wow, I'm thankful. Even though it was a trial and a struggle and a, it upset me deeply, I am saved and justified by the living God and I'm, I'm <coughs> appointed to minister his word. And yet this is my point of struggle, this is my thorn in the flesh. Paul described a, a mystery illness or a moral struggle that he carried with him that God said to him, you know, I'm going to leave this with you. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I'm seeing a bit discombobulated or broken these things wear on our, our minds you know what do I do Lord I pray I've had an answer on it I have to follow protocol it's not my you know, set up a house people can come in <coughs> home share and people come in who aren't <coughs> we allow people to come in who are not morally similar who don't who are, you know, not professing Christians that's better than professing atheists and how much do we operate in that area of forgiveness and uh, correction acceptability and how much that puts upon us the, the, the chance of being hypocritical I have the same loose moral desire I can't ratify God doesn't ask us to sit and I can't, I can't ratify that knows that we sin, he knows that we fall, but we're, we're encouraged to develop a, a character and a strength of Jesus to, to, to allow that to happen, and that allows in turn for Jesus to dwell within us, to live within us, it allows the Holy Spirit to operate, which is something I yearn for, I desire, it gives me great joy to hear people talk of, of, of effective answered prayer, of, of um, you know, inspiration and 
all these things are upstanding in, in, in the moral community, if you like, in the kingdom community, desperately wanting of the, these things, but you know, not I'm a, the danger is become like Simon the sorcerer, and we want to pay for these things, but not actually live uh, and give ourselves over to them fully. Just becomes an act of moral turpitude. <sighs> Where does that leave us? Good morning. God of wonders. I mean, I think a uh, uh, correction I've had this week. <coughs> Three months ago, I underwent an operation on my most private of parts. One where uh, the Bible speaks about how, how the <coughs> most secret of parts tend to be our the most undesirable, the ones we're least content with, and yet the, they're also the most great of greatest utility and function. And well, our extremities tend to be the clumsy things, even though it's the hands and the feet, and now it's the inner parts that, 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 that we delight in. I have to look up the scripture that I will do for pray later <clears throat> and uh, as you can imagine it's not the best thing to do uh, uh, to have a post-traumatic stress so the majority of it's worked out still the outlying areas of that uh, unique mental autistic spectrum whatever you want to call it condition is you know quite a healthy adversity to traumatizing pain. And basically the, the urethra, there's some damage to my urethra which restricts the flow of urine and it's caused me not to empty my bladder and I was getting I got to a stage, I was getting multiple um, urinary tract infections. <coughs> um, uh, the procedure that they put me through was a, a knocking out and a stretching of the tubes, if you like, trying to make them better. And I'll tell you, the first two months, it was like something I'd never experienced in my entire life, I think. Uh, riding the bike style, peeing, great satisfaction, of great emptying of the bladder. Like, like you know, when, you, when your children are young, if you haven't got children, you've got through it. Uh, it's like great crap into the toilet. You know, it's been, potty train and nappy train and I've been to the toilet and they announce I've just had a wee they come in no matter if we're in the middle of dinner or people are bit, I've just been for a poo and they're proud of what they're doing growing up and reaching one of those milestones and it, it was like that it's been like that and then over the last month it's closed off again and although the problem is nowhere near what it was before it's back and it's painful and um, uh, you, 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 know, you get urgent needs to pee Uh, 
inconvenient a modern moral thing and then last week I go for a, a appointment at the urologist I have a test, a flow test and the first thing the urologist says is, oh well that's not worked has it and my flow's low and I check ultrasound and check the bladder it's not emptying properly again and the prognosis is that over a fairly long period of time I don't know number of years it will get progressively worse and uh, we'll be back certainly from the beginning we'll be back to the uh, risk in, in, increased risk of, of urinary tract infections bladder infections <coughs> so given the prognosis of course you're like well what's the uh, way forward from here and the answer which I didn't really want to hear uh, nonetheless, and I share with you now, and I'm sorry if, you, if you're squeamish, if you don't want to be exposed to a fairly, uh, well, the, the answer was aggressive surgery, and, and uh, uh, I'm going to go into some detail about that, so if you want to switch off, switch off, if you want to fast forward, fast forward. <coughs> I'll give you a moment to get to the buttons and make the choice. And I'm... Um, I prayed in that situation. There is another procedure to go through and uh, that, that can be explored, and having you to be explored with the use of stents at, uh, at the time. The, the surgeon didn't feel that's the best idea. The specialist has limited success, and <coughs> he's rather gone to the next level. And it's funny when I got home, my estranged wife I uh, was the only person I could really tell or felt comfortable to tell and, and, and she said oh praise the Lord there's a there's an option <laughs> praise the Lord there's an operation that you can have which was a bit different to the <laughs> drastic and uh, catastrophicized situation I was in and I thank the Lord for it. And yeah, helping me keep a relatively even keel. Not just that. Not in prayer and release. Yeah, we're, we're, this is life's just a vapor and we talk about these things, we talk about that but in the <coughs> same way we're exploring I'm exploring my moral turpitude. The same way I'm, I'm, I'm questioning God in, in, in terms of what's allowable in my life, in the same way that I'm estranged from my wife. And you know, so many things are up in the air at the moment in my life. That's what I was going to say now. I'm trying to share with you the excellence of the Lord. He's unchanging, that's our faith, it's our profession, it's, it's what we believe, the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, morally and incorrupt and unshakable in his, his, his rightness. <clears throat> and we, we, we are to wrestle in parts, you know, to work out our salvation in fear and trembling is to do that and we see examples in the Bible but we're not to cling to single issues and single examples that, 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 that just justify us being and doing what we want no matter how dark the path how narrow the road we're God's children at the end of the day and we need to be surrendered to his will rather than professing just our own Ooh. which takes us back to the, the children being corrected and it's the excellence of God to be in that, that, that level that oh in my life to be to be that, that precise in the correction in the, in the exemplifying it's so gentle and beautiful at the same time potentially aggressive not saying that God has sent that that, that uh, difficulty of this particular situation but rather I've invited it and I'm inviting God to correct me 
but also limiting because of my my stubbornness my arrogance my pride also limiting his ability to respond to a point where he has to respond in a way that, that that's clear <laughs> that's that's uh... right gentle yet firm it's beautiful with all the situations going on the question in terms of morality the question in terms of relationship the question in terms of walk and way do, do I want to be a Christian do I, do I, do I uh, want to gain a moral high ground do I want to take the, the take down the the high places the, the things that I've talked about and shared about the the, the the difficulty the more the kings of Israel had in, in the history and chronicles is the uh, taking down of the high places the places where other gods are worshipped where idols were worshipped still um, caught bound used to grown up in I don't know what you call it a reward based culture and instead of accepting Christ's forgiveness and the gifts of the Holy Spirit as enough more than enough I, I hold out for a, a, a special treatment something more and there are examples of this in scripture people wrestling with God I think it was uh, Jacob wrestled with the Lord until the Lord put his hip out. <laughs> well, they wrestled and they came apart. And uh, as far as I'm aware, Jacob was granted his boon. We know that David was forgiven of his sin. We know that, 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 that in <clears throat> these instances, these, these, these great men of God were brought to a point where they needed to contest their morality but they also in relationship with the Lord oh Lord Jesus so I've just walked down here and I've walked through water through water I sank in it and didn't walk on it and now I sat down on a chair and I just soaked straight through my pants. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus, for your correction, your teaching. Thank you. Please, Lord, help me walk in righteousness. Yes, we have choices to make. We have responsibility. Uh, and throwing ourselves repeatedly at the foot of the cross and saying, please, Lord, do it for me, help me. Is, I don't know if that's enough, because really God wants us to mature, to walk upright before him. Sorry, there's no, nothing to see. That view is beautiful. There's the bay. <sighs> Sabbath rest. Here I am, blogging. Why? Because I want to share it with somebody. I want to be that cherub sat on the cloud. I want to cloud. I want to talk to Jesus. I want to record it, capture it, then I can share it and make myself famous. <laughs> I'm being... Sadly true. Nobody's watching these vlogs and I'm doing it to try and share, capture relationship with God. I read the book of Little Don Camillo when I was young. Maybe it was the wrong book to read. I was drawn to it by the priests. 
relationship with, with God. But the enemy was always present and equal, which is a, a great mistake of some face in one world. Our enemy is defeated and Jesus is real. And there's an opportunity for us to walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I know that's what I'm doing. But in taking up the mantle, in wearing those things, in, in receiving the Holy Spirit is also in the relationship, a giving over of self, an abeyance to, to God Most High. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to ask about, and I'm going to pray about, and I'm going to speak to the Lord about now. Are you blessed in your day, morally, and the, the, the household thing I have to issue? You know, it's just to follow protocol, issue a warning, <coughs> and also you know discuss the reality that if his girlfriend he comes over and stays, asks us about what's going on, or, or we're in, are we okay to talk about what's going on? What we won't do is lie. And if he finds difficulty with that, then it's better he finds somewhere else and not put us in that situation. Because morally, that's exactly what he is doing, the selfish little tow rag. <sighs> May the Lord touch his heart. And rebuke what's dark inside us, in Jesus' name. So have a good um, Sabbath, the rest of it. Uh, be blessed in the new week that comes after it. And may the Lord of light be your light and guide in Jesus' name.